I'm Tom and I make the tea. Um, <laughs> some people call me the tea master. Um, they call Martin the root master master. So, yeah, I'm the tea master, basically. Actually refurbished by uh, an engine rebuilder who the military actually used. They didn't do it themselves. And everything in this engine, whether it needed it or not, the military was sort of known for being a bit over the top with their maintenance really. And basically this engine would have been stripped. Uh, it had new pistons, new linings, new crankshaft, uh, new bearings, valves, everything was done. So although it says it's reconditioned, it's really a brand new engine. Uh, we've had a look in there when we had the sump off, we had a look a good look at the internals of the engine and it is all brand new. So to give you an idea, if we were to do that with the old engine, you'd be looking at probably a minimum of sort of nine to ten thousand pounds to actually do that. So that was a, the other reason to actually use this engine because it was, you know, for, for cost point of view, it was sort of a no-brainer really. Uh, this engine was eighteen hundred pounds. And there's quite a few available. Uh, they were floating around, coming out of auctions a few years ago. Uh, I think about three or four years ago, and they were sort of selling for about anywhere between five and five hundred and thousand uh, pounds. And they got snapped off, or snapped up by various people. Uh, and we're lucky, but we, well, one guy, Rob Duca, had the foresight to buy a few of them. Uh, and he, I think he probably bought maybe a dozen of them and he's been selling them for £1,800 a piece. Okay, the old engine was 9.4 litre, but this one is 12.6. Uh, so it gives you a lot more, lot more power. But we're not using all the power because we were running the original injection system of the original Rootmaster. Uh, it's actually detuned for what the engine is. If we put the engine in with the you know, setup for how it would have been in a lorry, uh, we'd have far more power than we actually need and could possibly, if somebody wasn't careful with it, damage the transmission because you've just got, you know, probably caught more power than you actually really need. All the sump, all this bottom half here, that is off the original engine. Uh, the uh, injector pump, the power steering pump, the water pump, uh, the flywheel, um, these bits here we had to get made up. Uh, Mech Engineering next door made those for us. Um, but Mech Engineering made quite a lot of bits, including the uh, modification to the pulley uh, and uh, some, of the bits, some of the bits for the fuel tank as well. Uh, so, all that was also uh, a modification what was done. That there is your reservoir for your power steering. So, all that had to be changed. This is off the original engine. That there is your header tank where, where all your antifreeze and your coolant goes. That's off the original engine. This here is your, your, where your oil goes, where you put engine oil in it. That's off the original engine. Uh, so there's a massive amount of parts which were taken off the original engine to put on this engine to make it fit. Including the sump, uh, the water pump, uh, injector pump, uh, starter motor, alternator, few modifications done, you've got a pulley down there, which you, you have the, the, the fan, the radiator fan on. Uh, that had to be machined to make the fan fitted, or to make the fan fit, I should say. Uh, these things here, everybody likes these, everybody likes those. They're, they're not actual, but they're like little air strainers, right? And that's where the engine sucks its air in. Originally, there was like a plastic bowl in the middle of them, and uh, it's designed to catch, you know, if you think of a, a JCB tractor, it's running in all kinds of arduous conditions and they're designed to catch the sort of extreme sort of dust before it goes into the main fi filter. Um, we couldn't put the complete things on because they were touching the bonnet because they, they sat up about that high. But we did, we did, uh, that was the original idea. Um, like for a lot of these things, it's a lot of trial of error really. Um, you have to th think on your feet and work things out as you go along really. That's the injector pump. An injector pump is a mechanical pump which pumps the diesel or now of course, Vegar, uh, through these injectors. Now these injectors 
are actually from the original 760 engine anyway these these particular injectors um, and when the uh, fuel is up to temperature the veg or struck biofuel it burns it perfectly probably bar for the actual main block of the engine it, it's it's all the original replacer stuff because the beauty with doing it like that we didn't have to chop up uh, the bus apart at all uh, Nothing was altered on the bus whatsoever. Uh, this engine went straight in there. Water comes through there, goes back there, all right, and that is the coolant water from the engine, and that runs the same temperature as what the engine does. So that's like a little radiator, really. So your your biofuel stroke veg oil comes in in there and comes out at the top. So by the time it comes out at the top, it comes in cold. By the time it comes out at the top, it's hot it's as hot as what the engine is and then it comes out of there goes into this filter I'm going to say the word and actually if you put your hand on the filter it's actually quite hot you know you can put your hand on it but it's actually quite hot so you can tell if it's working so uh, the oil stroke veg oil becomes nice and thin when it's hot and the engine can burn it absolutely fine I've tested it for power and uh, believe it or not you would think it would actually be more efficient on diesel, and it's not. It's um, just as efficient on the on the uh, on veg oil. The old engine ran okay, but it was just tired. You know, it didn't want to start in the winter. When it did start, you know, it, it was a bit embarrassing because uh, you'd leave like a sort of smog behind you. Uh, it was okay when it warmed up, but this engine, even when it's cold, it, it just doesn't smoke. And obviously the advantage we've run it on uh, the veg on, sort of biofuel, and uh, that's even better for the environment as well, uh, because it doesn't have all the nasties in it, all the nasty sort of uh, side effects what the diesel has when it burns. You've got two sets of pipes. You've got your diesel feed, your diesel return, and your veg oil, sort of biofuel feed, and your bio return. And how most diesel engines work, they have a return because they, they bring the fuel from the tank and then they return it. They, so it goes in like a big loop. Yeah, and it uses the fuel it needs and the fuel it doesn't need gets returned back to the tank. So it makes it a bit more complicated because you have to have sort of all, all these extra pipes. So basically how it starts, it starts on diesel. These are your solenoids which decide via a switch which is in the cab how it's going to work. So um, this this switch here, this is your feed. So you've got diesel coming up on one side and veg or stroke biofuel coming up the other side. Now depending on where your switch is in the cab after it's run and got up to temperature, you flick the switch to biofuel when you're ready, stroke veg on. It then sends, a, sends that around the engine. This then cuts in at the same time, which also sends a return back, back to the uh, to the biofuel tank, stroke veg on. So all the fuel is going around in one big loop. However, when you turn the engine off, just before you finish, at the end of the day, it's very important to, to switch back to diesel. So. If you don't do that, basically what happens, this system will be full of veg oil. And if you try and start on a cold day, it would never start because the oil would go so thick it wouldn't go through the system. So you have to turn back to uh, diesel. So you've got a, a switch in there. So you, you've got a light which comes on green, which tells you that it's on veg oil. Uh, you've got a light that comes on red, which is what they call purging. Now what purging is, it takes, it, when you switch it to purgin, it takes the oil from the diesel tank, takes the fuel from the diesel tank, but it sends a return back to the biofuel tank, struck bed oil. This is where the uh, wiper switch used to be. Um, but uh, somebody before us took the wiper switch out because the wiper now is operated off the wiper motor. So there was a big hole there. So, uh, I don't really like cutting holes in, in things, but there was already a big hole there, and the hole was perfect for that switch, so there we go. <laughs> um, so yeah, no, it's very easy. So you come out of the vehicle in the morning, all right, cold, frosty morning, minus 10, yeah, 
leave that as it is. Don't don't touch it. If the light is off, it's running on ordinary fuel. You can't really get it wrong. No light, it's running ordinary fuel. The ordinary fuel has a 12 gallon tank, so it'll actually run it'll run for a long time. I mean you can go and do you know drive it around all day really if you wanted on that. But um anyway, so you start it on the ordinary fuel. After it's run for 10 minutes, quarter of an hour, whatever, um, I flick the switch down and as soon as your green light is on, that that's green light is indicating that uh, you're running on uh, the biofuel, stroke veg oil. So that's running on, actually at the moment, 100% cooking oil that's running on and uh, it's running on it perfectly. Nice and clean, no issues. The important thing you do have to remember when you come to your end of your journey, it's important not to leave it with the uh, veg oil in the fuel system because if it was cold and in the winter you would definitely have issues because the veg oil would get very thick and the engine wouldn't start on it and uh, the, the veg oil has to be work has to be warmed up to walk, walk in, working temperature at the engine uh, in order for it to be thin and go for the filters otherwise it will just block up and uh, cause a problem so what you've got to remember at the end of the trip about 10 minutes before flick the lever or the switch up so the um, light is on red and that's what they call purging purging actually means it takes fuel from the uh, diesel tank so it's running on pure diesel but it's sending the return, or basically what fuel is left in the, in the system, back to the veg oil tank. Whatever position you put the switch in, the, the important thing is you, the bus won't stop. Um, you can't put it in no man's land where it'll just like run out of fuel. You can't. It, it, it'll either, it's either drawing diesel or it's drawing the bio stroke veg oil. Um, the purge is, is uh, like I say, where it's drawing diesel and send in the return, which is the excess fuel it doesn't use, back into the biofuel stroke veg oil tank. Well, we knew we would fit in because the blocks are the same. Uh, so the actual block of the engine is exactly the same as the old one. Uh, and this and that, there's a lot of engineering you've got to do. Uh, won't just fit in. You know, people think, oh, it'll just fit in, or you have to cut the bus apart to make it fit. People, all people say all kinds of different things. A lot of it's a learning process, really. As you do it, you've got to work out what you've got to do and what you don't have to do. Um, but this one, we managed to get in here without modifying the bus in any way whatsoever. Uh, even the exhaust pipe, it's got the original exhaust pipe on it. Uh, we haven't cut any of the bulkhead away, it's got the original radiator on it, original prop shaft, etc. So, say if somebody ever donates you a nice 690 engine, brand new, could happen, we can put this bus back to originally how it was made, uh, should that ever be the case in the future. So it was quite important actually not to modify the engine. A lot of things we did have to modify, but, uh, uh, the pulley on the front that takes the fan, that was completely different, so we had to get that machined. Uh, the air filters on the top, um, they're actually JCB tractor air filters, those two thousands on the top, so we had to get um, some collars machined to actually make those actually fit into the engine. Uh, also, there's quite a, quite a few other things you've got to do, like the, the injectors, you can't use the injectors at the old engine, you use injector pump, you can't use the injectors, so that's actually running on its original 760 injectors. Uh, the other thing, the flywheel, which is what they call the fluid flywheel, there's actually twice as many holes in the 760 engine, mm -hmm. and the original flywheel uh, had twice as many. I believe it had uh, 12 bolts holding the flywheel on. This only requires six bolts. So you've got to do some modifications there. Uh, if you didn't do any modifications, you'd fill the thing up with oil and all the oil would run straight on the floor. One of the um, problems I had when I thought, well, how are we going to do this? Okay, and I thought, well, we've got the original fuel tank there. It's a 30 gallon tank. Okay, so the Seems a bit pointless 
to have your diesel as you as you, as, as your main tank. So I wanted the 30 gallon tank to be the tank for the veg on. And then I thought, okay, where on earth are we going to put the other tank? Because you have got quite a few things under here. And it was also important as well, because the kindness offensive didn't actually want the bus to look any different. They didn't want any holes in the side or anything like that. So one of the obvious places to put a tank here and then the filler under the bonnet. The only thing about that is you pull into a garage, the engine's red hot, somebody spills, you know, oil, you know, diesel goes over the engine. Not particularly satisfactory, you know, it could be a fire risk. And if nothing else, it would make a hell of a smell. So, but okay, so we don't really want that. So anyway, so we managed to get a, a fuel tank off of London very taxing. Uh, beauty of that is, should anything ever go wrong with this, I think they're about 140 quid. They're very easy to get. Uh, Tim actually, Tim Barrington made the brackets. Uh, did a very good job. Um, even painted them a nice, sexy colour green. Uh, so uh, that's uh, that, that's all the holds the tank on. And the filler is where the step, where the little footstep was to climb onto the bonnet so the filler is in there so we actually didn't drill any holes in the, in the actual uh, structure of the vehicle at all and it could be put back very very easy. Uh, certainly with these classic buses it is a sort of uh, a, a, a good option I mean it's a cleaner running fuel uh, you know sustainable you know and, it's, and, it's, and it's, it's better for the environment at the end of the day uh, there is a council actually running all their buses on, on cooking oil uh, in uh, West Wales. Um, they run their whole fleet uh, of about, I think it's about 50 or 60 buses. Oh, and wow. they run them exactly the same as what we're doing here. So, yeah, I think it, it, it certainly sort of, um, it, there's definitely a market for it. And I think it, I think it, uh, it is a good option. I mean, there's, there's other options, um, but you couldn't, for, for the type of work this bus does, it wouldn't be any good when an electric, because you could have electric motors in it, which is what we will do. Uh, we've got a um, fleet of buses in London, and we probably will make those run on electric stroke diesel. Wouldn't be any good for this, because the problem is with this, it does a lot of long distances. So, Problem you get with like a, with a hybrid bus, they run out of electric. So therefore, you end up crawling along about 20 miles an hour because your batteries go flat, and you've got a little engine which can't really cope with charging. This will go all day at 40, 45, 50, whatever speed you want to do, and it'll do it all day long, every day of the week. Um, and the other thing as well, they're actually very good on fuel. I mean, this this will be doing about 14, 15 to the gallon probably. The steering ram is actually operated, a little valve there, uh, and that's called the drag link. And the drag link goes to the steering box, and the steering box is obviously operated off the steering ram, off the steering wheel, I should say. So as you turn the steering wheel, uh, it moves this rod, and this rod goes back and forth and actually switches a little valve inside the steering ram, which then makes the steering ram open and close. Very simple, really. Very difficult to get bits from, should, should something go wrong with it. We can get, get the rods, we get the seals. At the moment, if that valve goes there, it's called a bobbin valve, I believe. Uh, if that goes, at the moment, there's no replacement. So that's bad news if that goes. So charge up anywhere between uh, 12 and 1400 PSI. So bear in mind, they've got 550 PSI of air stroke nitrogen in, in there. And when the oil pump charges, it pushes the piston back. And the piston will come back probably very nearly to the end. And that's your reserve of braking. And the only way you know it's charged really is you've got the stop flag and the little light in the cab. Three different sorts of diffs. One is a standard diff. Uh, the next one is a country diff. And the fastest is what the RMAs had. Now the RMAs were the airport buses which were capable of doing sort of 60, 70 miles an hour. In fact, they did used to do that speed. Hence the reason 
they had a very fast diff in there. So in this bus it would be nice to get one of those fast diffs or, or even a country diff. Because uh, a country diff with the extra power we got now in the engine would propel it along quite nice. This bit here, this steel structure here is what they call the B-frame. There's a lot of talk about B-frames because the B-frames they corrode and you come here Robert and have a look in here this is one of the problems what happens with them but they corrode and all this spreads open and they end up in a, in a tower mess all this all this parts they'll, they'll split as much as about three inches along there when they rebuilt we then seal them up to stop it happening this one's been done uh, and when I painted it some years ago I sprayed plenty of sort of paint up in there and, and resealed it up inside uh, so this this was probably repaired years ago but it's in very very good condition so it's, it's not going to go again uh, this is actually this piece here is actually one what we're in the, in the process of um, repairing so that is a b-frame leg so you've got two of those in a bus they're handed you've got one each side um, and that can cost as much as four thousand quid to repair if they need doing Definitely, yeah, it runs well, it's very, very clean on the exhaust, it seems to run well both on diesel and on biofuel, so good result. Yeah.